All right, that's enough goofing around for right now. Good evening, everybody. Good to see y'all here. Let's turn on some lights. It's a little dark. There, I guess I can, I, I can see clearly now. The rain is gone, or the dark is gone. Oh, and speaking of darkness, yes, what is going on here? Well, different stuff goes along every single week from my fr good friend Prime Analog Records. How you doing? North Carolina Vinyl Picker, good evening. Nice to see you. Hello and welcome to April 13th, Friday the 13th, fall on a Saturday. Oh no, I got to hide under a table someplace. All right, let's make things better. Pour a little bit of Diet Coke. Oh, yeah. So at this time last week, everybody was freaking about, freaking out about the eclipse. And I count myself as very, very fortunate because my house was 
darn near smack dab in the middle of totality. The opportunity of a lifetime. And myself, my wife, and both my daughters, my son-in-law, and my grandson all experienced totality from our front yard. It was crazy, man. Uh, we kept on watching through the, through the glasses, and more, more of the sun just kept on getting covered up and covered up and covered up. And then when it was totality, we're thinking, okay, so what's going to happen now? And at 3.10 in the afternoon... It got as dark as 11 p.m. Street lights went on. All of the uh, photo cell lights in, in all the driveways on the street went on. Birds got quiet. People were cheering from their front lawns. And that classic picture of the sun blocked out with the solar flares coming out all sides, was right there. And it was white as white can be, but the yard was dark. And it was absolute beauty. Something I'll never get to see again in my lifetime. But man, was it awesome. So, if you were in the area of totality, I hope you got to see it. Or at least in most areas of the U.S., you got to at least uh, t take a look through eclipse glasses and see the sun being clouded away by the moon. It was pretty freaking great. Good evening, Nate Bouchard. Hello, Graceful Goose. Hello, NBC was wrong to cancel. Oh, wait, you can't fool me, Chief Dancing Ostrich. Okay, there's plenty of great shows that have been canceled in the past, and I'm very sorry to hear about your precious quantum leap. What, what are you going to do? There will be more, okay? But anyway, Thumbfinger, you're back! You said you weren't going to be able to see, be here, but you are slapping that base. Good. Let's see. Oh, you're working at the hospitals. Okay, so you'll be in that. That's cool. All right. You can, you, can, you can always watch the repeat, and parts of this show may be turned into a separate video on my, uh, on my uh, YouTube channel. Uh, let me fix it so that I've got dedicated uh, internet here. Turn off my Wi-Fi and just do it connected directly. That'll be much, much better. All right. So, very cool. A toast of Diet Coke to everybody out there. So, I guess Expona is going on in the, the Chicago area. So I've seen pictures on uh, Instagram of, uh, like, there's Ched Kassam from Acoustic Sounds. There's Mike from the In Groove with his wife. And uh, Melinda Murphy with her husband are there spending all their money because that's what they do. Anyway, so eh, it's a big hi-fi thing. If, if you can afford it, if you can go, if you got the time, that's pretty cool. So what can you do? Um, so there wasn't too much to talk about this week, except for the fact that a week from today, we've got Record Store Day. And I was going to do a very big, deep, in-depth uh, dig uh, for Record Store Day and talk about a lot of releases. I'm still going to do that. But there, I, I may have to do another video later on this week because um, I got a couple emails. There's a record company that are sending me some records that are going to be released on record store day, uh, and they want me to review them. So I'll be happy to do so, but they haven't, they haven't arrived yet. But as some of you might know, because you're tuning in now, maybe for the first time and hello, welcome. This is the place on Saturday nights 
where we talk about music and records and audio and whatever. We have a lot of fun here. Um, my name is Bill and you're watching Bill's Box of Sound. And uh, something that arrived today, you saw it earlier if you checked out my little video, the UHQR Ultra High Quality Record from Analog Productions of Steely Dan's Gaucho came. Now you're saying, well, Bill, I thought you were going to open it up. Yeah, I did. What I do when, when I get these things uh, is I, I cut along the edge here so that I can actually take this thing apart. So this way there's still protective shrink wrap on here. Um, and then once, once I have... Uh, evaluated the whole thing. I take the record out of here and stick that in my shelves. And I've got um, all of the UHQRs that I own. Let's see, over here, you'll be able to see them. A bunch over here. Now I, I've, I've got the Steely Dan's that have come out so far. And the only other ones I've got are um, Miles Davis Kinda Blue on 33. And Jimi Hendrix, are you experienced at 33? And there's a good chance I'm probably not going to be buying many more of those because, man, they're expensive. They are freaking expensive. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, in the case of the Steely Dan's, when... The Steely Dan catalog was announced as ultra high quality records from Analog Productions. I jumped on that and pre-ordered all of them because among my favorites of all time, I always tell people, let's see, wait a second. I always tell people, Frank Zappa. Mm. Primus, Miles Davis, John Coltrane, um, The Residents, or at least all the way up to, up until about the year 2000 or so, or 1988 or so was, was probably the year, but I'll have more to say about The Residents later on tonight. Um, who else? They Might Be Giants... Uh, XTC, XTC especially. And of course, there's lots of other bands that I dig a lot. But Steely Dan has always been one of my favorites. Um, I discovered Steely Dan in the late 70s. Um, the first album I bought from them was The Royal Scam. I had always heard the hits on the radio, like Do It Again, Ricky Don't Lose That Number, my old school stuff like that. Heard, heard it on FM radio. But for some reason, the first album I bought was a Royal Scam. And just enjoyed it so much, I just started working backwards, getting all the original pressings of those. And I bought Asia the day it came out. I, I bought um, Gaucho the day it came out. And I followed them through Two Against Nature in 2000 and also Everything Must Go, which I think are great albums as well. And there's a lot of people who really hate Steely Dan. Um, and uh, yes, Back, back in their early formative days, Chevy, J Chevy Chase played drums for Steely Dan. And uh, then he decided not to continue on with a career in music and went into a career in comedy. So, yes, that, that, that is historically correct. Also, if you're a big Chevy Chase fan, you know that he was very good friends with uh, the j jazz pianist Bill Evans in his later years up until he passed away. Uh, Chevy Chase is very deeply into keyboards. As a matter of fact, he played, he put out a solo record where he did comedy and music and he played piano on that. So yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool. Anyway, 
and one very vocal anti Steely Dan uh, person on the vinyl community, even though I really enjoy his videos and he's very entertaining, is Robert Fithin. Oh, he hates Asia. And he thinks that the, the world's biggest, uh, um, it's, it's not an anachronism, the, 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 the most ironic thing in the world will be when it comes out, the royal scam on a UHQR because he believes that the price that they are charging for these is a royal scam. But after I had gotten my first UHQR, um, kind of blue, and listened to it and compared it to all the versions that I had heard before, I was sold. Just it, It's just that... Uh, Chad Kassam and the people at Acoustic Sounds, they have broken down every single possible step in the process of making a record and found a way to amp it up to the highest degree and make the best possible sounding record in the world. Uh, they have a trademark on the Clarity Vinyl, they bought the trademark of the UHQR from uh, the old Mobile Fidelity. And um, they basically did everything right, spared no expense. And when you pay that money uh, for, for, for uh, a UHQR, you can tell that the, the, the money is well spent. Um, in almost all cases, it's absolutely true. Uh, and we're going to be talking about Gaucho in just a few minutes because I got it and I've listened to it and I compared it to another version. And uh, to repeat what I said in my teaser video, as far as the uh, UHQRs are concerned, uh, let me just pull these out one at a time here. First lead in album, Can't Buy a Thrill. Here's my UHQR of it that I keep on, on my shelf fantastic sound um heard stuff that i've never heard before um a beautiful way to listen to a beautiful debut album then next one that came out was countdown to ecstasy which still is very very close to it, it, it probably still is my favorite Steely Dan album just because of the groove that they get into and uh, the songs on here. I just love this album. And things like uh, the solo guitar from Jeff Baxter on My Old, old School. Whew, amazing. I mean, you can, you can hear, you can feel the cabinet of the amplifier when he's banging away on that solo, it's unbelievable. And then, <laughs> they came out with this one, the third Steely Dan album, Pretzel Logic. Now, I love all the Steely Dan albums, but not equally. This was always the one Steely Dan album that just didn't have it all. Uh, I mean, let's see. There's great songs on it. Uh, you know, Monkey in Your Soul. Uh, Any Major Dude Will Tell You, Ricky Will Don't Lose That Number. Um, e St. Louis Toodaloo, their, uh, their tribute to Duke Ellington. But for some reason... This album just seemed to be the weakest of the Steely Dan albums. And when it came out in an ultra high quality record, a UHQR, it, it was just lacking something. Now, still, when I listen to this version of Pretzel Logic, I still hear things that I couldn't hear on the original or any other version that I've heard of. But this version just did not have the guts 
and the glory to deliver the full feeling of the Pretzel Logic album. And this is the closest thing to a disappointment. Uh, still good though, and there's still stuff on this version of the album that I, I, I never heard on any other version. Okay, and then what came out? Let's pull this out. Asia. Despite what all the critics say, well, and, and some of the critics do echo what I'm saying, this is one of the best sounding albums ever. And this is the best sounding version of this album, in my opinion. Uh, very happy, uh, especially since they went to pains to uh, regenerate the original uh, label <clears throat> design on that. So, let's get into Gaucho. Take this off of here. And uh, my copy, for those of you scoring at home, is uh, number 1,210. So, comes with a beautiful, shiny, stout and tip-on jacket with the insert reproduced on the inside with all of the lyrics and credits on the album. Absolutely beautiful. And of course, in all of the UHQRs, you get yourself some advertising. You get the UHQR Technical Specifications Manual. They have to put this in every single one because if this is your first, you want to find out this stuff if you don't know it already. All the steps that they go through to make this the best sounding record ever. Uh, you also get, uh, where is it? I think I left it in there. Hello. It's in here someplace. Or is it here? <clears throat> There's another insert. Oh, there it is. Right there. Come on. There you go. You've got your certificates of authenticity and uh, your statement that this is a limited edition of uh, 20,000. It says here that these are pressed in January 2024. And uh, I take my stickers off the front and put it inside of here. And with each of these Steely Dan re-releases, they've got brand new liner notes by Donald Fagan. With a picture of the original master tape. And Donald's notes, which I'm going to read from in a few minutes. And the... The two records on 200 gram clarity vinyl, which when I was running them through the uh, through the uh, Pum and Guru, they kind of looked like they had almost like an, a yellow tinge to them. But when you hold them up, they appear to be more clear. But here is your label right there, MCA Records, and that's uh, side uh, C there. Wait, no, that's, that's side uh, B. Hello, Roman. Hello. Roman is in the room. I'm going to have to go and get a chair for him in a minute. And there's side A. And hold on a second, and I will get you a chair so you can relax. And we can continue talking about uh, this record that I got today, which is called Gaucho. Excuse me, I'll be right back. Shall I turn on the synthesizer? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay. 
So, I was telling everybody about the eclipse. Oops, sorry. And it, what, you're going to hide under the chair? I go to, <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so if you hear a voice, it's, it's, it's Roman. He's down there, and he's playing his Nintendo Switch. Uh, so what did you think of the, of a, the eclipse? It was good. Was it awesome? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, some, it's something that, that uh, I, you may get to see again in your lifetime, but you'll be, a, you'll be older than me if you do, <laughs> probably. But, yeah, that was just very, very cool. Anyway, so getting back to this. So let's take a look at these liner notes from Donald Fagan. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'm going to read about the song Gaucho because there's something that I got to point out here. <clears throat> it says, uh, the song Gaucho describes a messy triangle between the narrator or narrator his squeeze, and some rude dude in a gaucho costume or something like that. The track was supposed to be a jokey pastiche of the off-kilter gospel thing Keith Jarrett was into at the time, but I guess Keith didn't think it was all that funny. He threatened to sue us, and we consented to give him a composer credit. And what he's talking about, if, if you don't already know about it, is uh, on this record right here. This is a really great album, by the way. Belonging by... Uh, uh, Keith Jarrett with this European uh, quartet. It's uh, him and Jan Garbarek, Pally Danielson, and John Christensen. The name of this album is Belonging, and the name of the track they're talking about is called Long As You Know You're Living Yours. And the beginning vamp sounds like the beginning of Gaucho, which goes dun, 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 dun. You know that. If you know Gaucho or you know this song, you know what I'm talking about. So, one of the first things I did was I went straight to disc number two. To see, did they actually give Keith Jarrett credit for the song Gaucho as a, part, as, as a writer? Well, let's take a look. Flip it over here. And here, you can read it yourself. It says, Music and Lyrics by Walter Becker and Donald Fagan. Doesn't say anything about Keith Jarrett on there. And it says the same thing inside of the, uh, instead of, inside of the um, lyric sheet. But at least he's mentioned in the liner notes. And uh, I'm pretty sure that legally uh, all of the kinks have been ruled out. So let's get to the sound of this record. Does this record hold up and is it really worth the extra money that you pay? And in my opinion, oh yeah, it, it is. Once again, I heard things on this record that I had never heard before. And the stuff that I had heard before, I heard qualities in it that were just mind-blowing. Um, I played it back to back with this copy here. This is actually the second copy of Gaucho that, I, that I've had. I, I bought the original the day it came out, and then um, in the moves that I've done over the years, the record got caught in a flood, and it got destroyed. This one almost got destroyed. <laughs> the bottom here is messed up, and there's some water stains on the back, but the record is still in tip-top shape, 
and I have cleaned it with an ultrasonic cleaner. And it still sounds really good. And of course, there is also a 33 version of this album and also a Super Audio CD version of this album coming out as well. And, and um, I have not heard those. I don't have access to them. And from what I've heard from the previous releases that have also come out remastered from the same tape, that made the UHQR that it just does not have the same sound on it. Now, an another reason why these records sound so darn good is because they didn't just remaster them and be done with it. You can tell in the runout groove of the records that they had to master this multiple times before they got it right. You take a look in the run out and aside from seeing uh, Bernie Grunman's autograph and uh, the, um, the matrix number, which is uh, APP 140-45, etc., etc., et cetera, you'll see something that's set in parentheses that says R E four and on one of the sides, which I think is side four, is it? Actually, I think it's side B with, um, oh wait. Yeah, it's, it, I think it's side C with, with the title cut gaucho on it. It says R E five. Now what that means is when Bernie cut the record from the original master tape, and worked his magic on it at 45 RPM. They send it to Chad Kassam. He gets it plated. They make a test pressing. And Chad listens to it and compares it to all the different versions. And there was something that he thought was not quite perfect. So he called up Bernie and said, listen, this, that, and the other thing just weren't right. Try it again and see if you can get that out of there and, 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 and fix it. So Bernie does another one and that matrix says RE1. Oh, I'm sorry, RE2 because he recut it the second time. Sends it to Chad, plates it, presses it, listens to it. Once again, there's something else that just wasn't perfect on it. And they kept on doing this until it got to the fourth version or the fifth version in the case of, of the one side. And once they got it just right, they stopped and they made the records. Now, the, the things that shine the most, I'm just going to go th through different things that I remember from listening to this today. Mostly drums and percussion. There's more pieces of percussion on there. There's shakers. There's bells. There's uh, uh, there's there's congas. There's um, uh, th th things that scrape against each other. There's hand claps. I had never really heard the hand claps on Time Out of Mind before. The sibilance on the vocals, especially the background vocals. On most of the versions that, that, that I've heard, when, you know, it says Babylon Sisters, shake it. That S in shake it just, it comes out just as, as a big mush. Here it comes through. No sibilance, no distortion. It just goes through all the way. It's beautiful. It's fantastic. Um, the guitars, the reverb, the separation of the instruments. I went back and listened to the 33 RPM version, my old half speed mastered version. And by comparison, it was just compressed, flattened. The UHQR was just 
it was out and you could pick everything out little bits of reverb that just shimmered through and it did not spoil the groove of the record it kept on rocking and if there's any complaint that I could possibly make about this record. And Mr. Grunman, I want to talk to you for a second. <laughs> Bernie, at the end of each side, now, one thing that people complain about when they have these 45 RPM remasters is that you've got to get up twice. I mean, four, three times to listen to the album. Whereas with a regular long playing record, you play the first side, you get up, you turn it over, you play the second side. No problem. Here, you play side one, you play side two, you play side three, side four. You're getting up every 10 minutes or so. I don't really mind it that much because I'm listening to this specifically for the high quality on it. But at the end of the side, the instant, the nanosecond that... The song has faded out or stopped. The runout groove starts immediately. <laughs> it starts going in. I say, let it go for a couple of revolutions before doing that runout groove. You got all this space here. Why not put that in there as well? But aside, that's nitpicking. Aside from that, thoroughly, I am thoroughly thoroughly satisfied, thoroughly happy and overjoyed. When I'm done with the show tonight, um, I'm probably going to pour myself a nice cold one and listen to this album again. It's that good. I've been listening to it since it came out in 1980 and very happy. Thank you. But, you know, I can't buy these albums all the time. And, and, and it's the same with the Atlantic Records uh, 75th anniversary series that they're coming out with. I've only bought one so far, and that was uh, Genesis Selling England by the Pound. I have a first British press of that album, and the, the versions are like day and night. I could not believe the, the, uh, the realism in that album. And I'm hoping to get the Yes album when it comes out as well. Which, if you don't know about it already, is this record right here. <laughs> I will buy the uh, 45 version of that. But, you know, 60 bucks an album, it's a lot of money. But if you really love an album and you really got, uh, you've invested in your audio system and you want to hear some great stuff, you're, you're going to really get your money's worth out of that. So... That is that. So, next Saturday is one of the most important days of the year for some of you record collectors. I know some of you people just don't care about it, but <coughs> it's Record Store Day. Yes, indeed. And people all across the the world in the countries that they do hold record store day are going to be getting up ultra mega early to get th those exclusive releases that they release on record store day. And there's a lot of people that have been getting all sorts of promos, especially elemental elemental records has been spitting out the promos like crazy. You got Bob Bradley, you got uh, Norman Maslov, you got Melinda Murphy, uh, there's uh, Ken McAuliffe. Uh, it, in addition to all the people who usually get promo copies because it's their profession, uh, they're all getting these jazz records from Elemental and, and they're reviewing them on their station. Well, I, I don't get any of that stuff. <laughs> but, you know, there, there is one thing, and oh, well, just by coincidence, uh, <laughs> um, our good friend, the Vaultmeister, has, uh, has reminded us that, yes, Frank Zappa for President, which was previously available only on CD, is going to be released in a special limited edition on a red, white, and blue splatter vinyl 
for Record Store Day. It's got some tracks on there which aren't available anywhere else. And it's going to be some good, good, good stuff. And, um, oh, here's a, a, a cool thing here. Joe bought Gaucho for his mom as a, as a Christmas gift in 1980. Now, now, now that there, now that there's a good, a good son. Hello, Psychos Platters. Good to see you. Hello, Greg. And let's see. Wow. Lots of people. <laughs> Dan, hello. So, sorry I didn't say hello to you. So check that out for sure. So there are a, a few things that, that I wrote down. Uh, of all of the jazz releases, the ones that I want the most... Uh, first of all, I want to get the uh, Cannonball Adderley two-record Pop It in Paris because that, uh, from what I hear, is a really well-done recording. And George Duke is on keyboards. Uh, this is George Duke right after he left uh, Zappa and the Mothers. <coughs> Pardon me. Hello, Spaghetti Lee. And that's going to be fun. Um, there's a lot of other jazz records that, that are coming out but a lot of them just just seem to be all, all sarans um now sun ra i mean there's a billion sun ra records and uh you never know i may buy, buy this one as well but um a lot of the sun ra records that i have and i've got like about 20 25 of them Mostly impulse buys, but I'm always happy that I got them. So, uh, here are my most wanted Record Store Day records. First of all, Todd Rundgren's album, Liars. This is an album that came out in, I believe, uh, 2000, 2002. And... As I've said before, this is after I had kind of given up on Todd Rundgren for a while. And then he comes and does this album of great songs. And once again, Todd Rundgren, the consummate producer, he plays, he, he writes everything. He plays everything. He produces everything. It's an amazing record and it's never been available on vinyl before. And it's also kind of hard to find on CD now. So if you're a Todd Rundgren fan... <coughs> Pardon me. Pick up liars. It's great, and that's the truth. <laughs> um, there is now. Where's where where's my list that I wrote down? <laughs> There's so many things here. Okay. There's going to be a three record set of the uh, South Park 25th anniversary concert, and. Not only does it have Matt Stone and Trey Parker of South Park, this concert was hosted by Primus, Ween, who have since this concert gone on a hiatus, and Geddy Lee and Alex Lifeson of Rush. Now, all those people getting together on that one album and doing a concert all having fun with the South Park music. <laughs> that is it. I'm going to pick that up. There's there's only 4,000 of those made. Oh, by the way, uh, the Frank Zappa for President, there's 3,500 of those. Now, I was kind of interested in the reissue of Sparks Number 1 in Heaven, which is packed together with an album by a, uh, a disco singer named Noel, and it was recorded right around the same time. But I went and I listened to the Noel album uh, over YouTube. And while you can hear the Sparks influence and you do hear Ron Mayo's keyboards, it's really just not strong material. If you've already got a clean copy of Number One in Heaven, I would not recommend buying it. But uh, Number One in Heaven great album by Sparks. The Residents are coming out with an album called Leftovers Again Again, which is a sequel of an album called Leftovers Again. And I kind of didn't pay attention to it when it first came out, the first one. 
and let's see if I can find a copy right here. I know I got it. Where's leftovers? Again! Oh, here it is. This is one of the most dumb, god-awful covers ever. <laughs> but it is a great compilation of odds and ends from the resident's career, and it's very well put together. So if, uh, if, if this one, if the new one is anything like this, it's going to be good. A uh, yes thumb finger. Uh, Bernie Worrell is coming uh, uh, coming out well posthumously, uh, and I'll find that in just a second here. And let's see here. Okay, there's only 900 copies of this residence, but um, uh, when I get done with this list, I'll find the Bernie Worrell there. Or very important, you can go to recordstoreday.com slash special releases and take a look at information on all of the stuff that's coming up Record Store Day. There's a lot. And thankfully, Taylor Swift is coming out with a record the day before Record Store Day. Last year, Record Store Day, there was an exclusive version of, I believe, the album Evermore. And the lines were so long because of all the Swifties coming out to buy the Taylor Swift record. It was ridiculous. As a matter of fact, there was a guy standing in line behind me saying, hey, uh, if I give you money, will you buy an extra copy of Taylor Swift so I, so I can get it for my daughter? It's like, well, you're standing in line. He says, yeah, but she needs one for her friend. It's like, well, she should have come out in line. Shouldn't have she. Anyway, also, Pearl Jam is coming out with a new album the day before Record Store Day. But if you are a Pearl Jam hardcore fan... Uh, there's going to be a yellow and black ghostly colored vinyl variant of it. It's a single record. Now, if you buy the new Pearl Jam record from most record stores or even Amazon, the record's going to go for around $40. If the colored vinyl variant of the new Pearl Jam album, Dark Matter, uh, which they're making 15000 of, costs less than $40, I'm picking it up because Pearl Jam, they're still putting out quality music all these years. So let's give it up for them. All right. Let's keep on going. A hundred Gex. Hyper Power Punk. A 10 inch EP with a die cut weed record kind of a picture disc it's only three songs on it and there are 3500 copies of that i want to pick that one up i like 100 gigs they're a lot of fun okay i was interested in the yes album yale bowl 71 which is a live concert from the same tour for, uh, that uh, the yes album was for I was excited about that, but this music has already been released as part of a super deluxe version of the Yes album. And if you go onto YouTube and search for the Yale Bowl concert in 1971, you can listen to this. The recording quality is not that great, and it's all in mono. So listen to that. If you're a Yes completist and you got to have everything, have at it. Enjoy. Captain Beefheart, the Spotlight Kid, another in the series of Captain Beefheart reissues. Uh, in this the series of Bat Chain Puller and Clear Spot, it's going to have a remastered version of the Spotlight Kid with a second record of demos and outtakes. And if it's anything like the extra disc that came with uh, Shiny Beast Bat Chain Puller, it's going to be wonderful stuff. Um, what else? Let's, let's find that Bernie Worrell record. What do you say? Uh, let's see. Now I'm going to talk about a couple of other releases. Okay. Yeah. Bernie Worrell is uh, coming out with a record called Wave from the Wooniverse. It's a two record set on uh, the ORG label. 
And let's see. It says, whether a chart topper or the gatekeeper to a deep cut, Brittany Worrell has infiltrated your ears, your eyes, most recently in Stop Making Sense's 40-year anniversary, and your heart. For those aware of Bernie's journey, it hasn't always been the linear path, but the music has landed at the forefront of the rich global culture. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, these compositions remained untouched for a period of decades, collecting dust on reels of two-inch analog tape for years following Bernie's passing. So, the tapes were re-examined to analyze Bernie's nuanced and creative methods, and it was remixed and, uh, and, and mastered with a series of Bernie's collaborators, such as Bootsy Collins, Sean Lennon, Leo Nocent Nocentelli, Fred Schneider of the B-52s, Miho Hattori, Steve Scales, Mark Rebo, Fred Wesley, and Marco Benevento. So... Looks like uh, this is going to be a, a pretty um, adventurous thing. Let's see. Also, Mike Watt is on this as well. Also, Norwood Fisher from Fishbone. That could be cool. This may be a very expensive record store day, friends. I tell you. And let's see. What else did they have? I was hoping for a, uh, a, a a monkeys release, and I saw that recently the um, Pisces, Aquarius, Capricorn, and Joe's Limited was uh, re-released on green vinyl. But let's see, yeah, there's going to be a mono re-release of the Birds, the Bees, and the Monkeys uh, from Friday Music coming out. So that may be interesting. What else? I'm just zooming down the list to see if there's anything else that's just popping out at me in, in my my opinions of them. There's going to be that Beatles three-inch record player and a little tiny Beatles records that look like chew bop uh, bubblegum things. And uh, I'm not interested in those, but some people may be. Let's see. There's uh, going to be a 7-inch from the Black Crows. They just came out with a new album recently. Uh, there's a uh, David Bowie album called Waiting in the Sky, which is demos of songs that uh, were written for what became Ziggy Stardust. That may be very interesting to uh, listen to. Uh, Brother Jack McDuff, Ain't No Sunshine on the Real to Real, another Zev Feldman creation. Let's see. Nat King Cole, Live at the Blue Note Chicago, double LP. Uh, 25th anniversary of Collective Souls Dosage album on Craft Recordings. And there's a number of albums that are coming out on picture disc that if they weren't coming out on picture discs, I might be interested in them. I mean, the cure has been coming out with every single album of theirs on a picture disc and they're coming out with Emerson Lick and Palmer's pictures at an exhibition on a, on a picture disc. Not interested because picture discs sound terrible. Oh, what else we got in picture disc? We've got Ace Freely's 10,000 Volts on a picture disc. Uh, we're going to have George Harrison's Electronic Sound and Wonderwall Music. Two albums that really do deserve a reissue coming out on picture discs. I'm sorry. Not interested in those. Uh, what else? There's a uh, Howlin' Wolf live in Europe, which is interesting. I'm still looking for a decent compilation of Howlin' Wolf on vinyl, even though I do have a couple of uh, his albums. Like, I've got hit uh, the London Howlin' Wolf sessions, which is pretty cool. Let's see. Yeah, Jenny Lewis, uh, Puppy in a Truck, coming out on picture disc. I don't know why. Oh, what else? Ch -ch -ch. Let's see, Motley Crue, Supersonic and Demonic Relics, two record set picture discs. 
Come on. Uh, Richard O'Brien, the composer of the Rocky Horror Picture Show and the guy who played Riff Raff in the Rocky Horror Picture Show, coming out with the original demos from the songs that became the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Okay, I agree with you, uh, uh, Mr. Joe. Picture discs are not as bad as they were in the 70s, but still, <laughs> they're pretty, they're, they're nowhere near regular black vinyl or a solid color, uh, colored vinyl record. Um, Orchestra Maneuvers in the Dark is coming out with an instrumental version of their latest album, Bauhaus Staircase. Oh, there's a Stephen Wilson record. Wait a second. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me look this up. I got I, I to gotta get the name of this. This I'm interested in, if I can find it. Let's see. Here it is. It's called Harmonic Divergence. And it is previously unreleased remixes of tracks from the 2023 album, The, Har the Harmony Codex. But these are all... Uh, differently remixed versions of the songs. Uh, some of the remixes done by the Manic Street Preachers and Mogwai. Um, very interested in, in Stephen Wilson stuff. And uh, I always try to buy a Porcupine Tree record or a Stephen Wilson record at least once a year. Even though, in my opinion, they're a little expensive. <laughs> but uh, a lot of times they are worth it because he really makes... Great sounding records. Uh, let's take a look at some of your chats, my friends. Let's see. Yep, you ran across the Janis Joplin picture disc and stuck it up on the wall. Okay, that makes sense. Let's see. You don't have that residence record, the uh, leftovers again. You may be able to find a copy on Discogs. That's how I got mine. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, by the way, Lauren, hello. Didn't say hello to you. Good to see you out here again. And let's see, everything else I was pretty much... Da -da 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 -da. Well, that's kind of cool. couple more looks here at the list before I let you go. Oh, there, there's two things that I'm probably going to be in, be reviewing later on in the week, so watch for this video. Um, there's the orb, uh, something called uh, an ambient excursion, the Holloway brooch. That's coming up for Record Store Day, and I'm going to have a chance to listen to it. And also, there is a uh, going to be a re-release, kind of, of the Alan Parsons Project Pyramid. Uh, it's going to be some leftover, unreleased, remixed, and demo recordings from the Pyramid album. Now, Pyramid is not my favorite Alan Parsons record. Although there are some really good songs on there. But the, uh, as far as a whole album, it doesn't stack up to some of the other ones. But you never know. Some of these alternate mixes and, and things may be exciting. I'm going to take a listen to it, and I'll report back to you guys and let you know what I think and how I feel. But, Record Store Day. If you're interested, get up early. Get in line. Watch your spending. Because records are wonderful, but they can make you go broke. As you can tell. <laughs> so, we're just about done here. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm probably going to start making some noise on the synthesizer again, so uh, Roman can join in if he wants. First, let me uh, wipe away the condensation so that, that uh, nothing gets wet here from the uh, ice on my Diet Coke. So... That's pretty much most of the things. Oh, 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 forgot, forgot to mention this. 
I did re-listen to this album last night, Hackensack West by Anthony Wilson, which is uh, a new release on Kevin Gray's Coherent Records. This is good. This is really good. Uh, it starts out kind of mellow, but it cooks. It's uh, guitar, bass, piano, dr uh, drums, uh, but it's jazz. It's not pop. Even though they cover a Todd Rundgren song, but yeah, good stuff. Highly recommended. That's it. So let's turn this down here. And... Uh, <laughs> So, as I usually say, until next week, <laughs> stay tuned for your local news, except for those on the West Coast, and still no new Zappa news, except for Zappa for President coming out on Record Store Day. Zappa fans, you get in line for that, pick it up, but don't buy my copy out from under me. I'll touch ya. Anyway, uh, lots of fun stuff. I had a great time. Hope you did too. And uh, listen to some music. Enjoy yourself. Be, be, be kind to each other. Thank you again for the opportunity to come into your room and infect your ears with my words and thoughts. And yes, Silly Dan's Gaucho UHQR is wonderful and well worth the money. Good night, boys and girls, brothers, sisters, siblings, etc. <coughs> <coughs> That's it.